We're waiting notification, sir. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast today. We have a great guest with us, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none, of, none other than our brother, Brother Leon, out of San Francisco. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Well, excellent, Brother Josh. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. Thank you, brother, for allowing me to be on your platform, brother. I've been I've been watching your platform for the last few years. So I'm grateful for the work you do, brother. Thank you. Thanks be to us. My honor. Yes, sir. So the first question that we have for you is, how did you get involved? How did you become an artist? When did you know that you had a love for music? You know, it's crazy, brother Josh. Um, I started doing music when I was 15 years old. Um, uh, it was me and a brother I grew up with, man. We started off, man, as youngsters. We used to be lip singing to like Run DMC and the Beastie Boys back in the day. Okay. And then okay. right when we got about 15 or 14, we got lucky and we ended up hooking up with a producer who used to work with MC Hammer. It's like right around 92. And we uh had a song out called The Hype Side. And that was my introduction right around 92. Okay, yes sir. Okay. Shout out to uh the uh MC Hammer. Okay, so did you have any interactions with him when you first started out? Nah, just so the brother's name was G-Rock, the producer. Um, okay. He kind of broke ways from MC Hammer and was doing his own thing. Um, so I never really got a chance to know MC Hammer or anything like that. I wish. Yes, sir. Me too. So if anybody's watching, right. I need to connect right, right. to MC Hammer one time. Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. So at 15, then then when did you start to take your craft serious? So it's funny, funny, brother Josh. So I did it 15, 16. Then I'm a pretty big guy. I'm about 6'4". I play football. Okay. In high school and in college. So at that point, rapping was just something I did on my spare time, really to relieve stress, to be honest with you, just to get my thoughts out. So I've always done it in the background. Only my closest friends and family even knew I did it. So um, I took on a life of playing sports from, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way to about 24. So uh, music was always my love. And I always wrote and dibbled and dabbled with the beats but I never really, you know, put it out there like that. It was just more so to, you know, to, to calm myself down, you know, to give me something to do, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So San Francisco, you're playing football. What position do you play? I played every position on the line. I played D tackle. I played uh offensive tackle. Um, anything on the line I played, man. Uh, you know, I that was my uh my second love slash fifths, they're even. That in music is kind of like they're equally uh yoked, I guess. But um I played in every position from center to tackle to guard, everything. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, that's amazing. And um, and you went to college. You played college. You played in college. Yeah, yeah. I went on um at the time. I went to a started off at a at a JC um College of San Mateo. Then I went on and did a little bit at Fresno State. But I didn't. I really wish to to be honest with you and anybody that's listening that's younger. My thing was I did not take my grades as serious as I should have at the time. I probably could have went. I kick myself to this day because I, I'm the youngest of three brothers and my older two brothers, one of them is 11 years older than me. Then the other one is seven years. They all got D one scholarships straight from high school and they uh, mm -hmm. did good things in their, in their, uh, in their, in their lives. Um, me being the youngest man and kind of like when I came up being the youngest in the nineties, my parents divorced. So I was kind of like the youngest one still hanging around the house. So I just got away with more than I should have got away with. And I didn't stay as focused as I should have. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Trust me, I understand. I, I to this day tell people in my mind I should have got drafted uh, or should have <laughs> got recruited by uh, Notre Dame and the university or the University of Miami to play running back. I, that's just like in, wow. another life, in another life. That's where I would have been. Yeah. It's wow. Like, oh, all praises be to Allah, man. At least you, you know, you know what you, you know. It still ain't too late, brother. You look like a pretty young man, brother. Yeah. Let me just let me just go. Let me just go walk on to Notre Dame. Let me go walk on to Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up, brother Josh. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, well, when did you first see the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Oh, man, it's it's crazy, Brother Josh, because all this happened all in one cycle. So, like I told you, I used to dibble and dabble with the music. I played football. And um, back in, uh, in the 92, 93 is when I was coming up uh, in high school. There was a brother that used to come to the school. Back in those days, they had um, they used to have these outside programs. I don't know if they still do it, that could come into the school and they would basically take a group of us young brothers and they would mentor us for like an hour. 
And there was a brother that came in. May Allah be pleased with him. He was a Muslim. His name is Brother Anthony 3X. They called him Big Tank. Mm. Um, he would come into this class, brother, and he would teach us out of the message to the black man. Mm. And that was my first. In the, well, it, I take that back. I'll be real quick. That wasn't my first introduction. Introduction, but it's funny how how Allah will plant the seeds on you. Uh, when I was in middle school, right? And I grew up in the Bay Area, San Francisco. I have an uncle who lives in Sacramento, which is about an hour and a half from the city. And my uncle was not in the nation, but he was a sympathizer of, of the messenger. Mm. The man loved bean pies. So he would come up to San Francisco. He was my mother's youngest brother. His name was Ralph, Uncle Ralph. He would come buy about 20 bean pies, brother. Kids, you not. <laughs> and he would take them back and he would freeze them. That's how much he loved that San Francisco bean pie. But I say this to say that um, I was going through a troubled time. Um, Like I told you, my parents were divorcing. And he did something, brother, that I thank him for life for. He took me to the Fillmore District, which is a, it's like kind of like what Harlem is to New York, right? To San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And there was a bookstore called Marcus Books. And he bought me the autobiography of, the, of Malcolm X. Mm. Now, mind you, I didn't like reading. I, I, there's other things I could have been doing. That was the only book that I, in my life before I got the teachings that I read twice. So mm -hmm. that was the introduction right there. And even, uh, one more thing, even along the way, it's crazy how, how things happen in your life. I remember far back as being nine years old. One time I was in the car with my mom and we were driving down this street called Third Street in San Francisco. It's in a black community. And I never forget, we were at the stoplight and I was about nine. And I, at the stoplight, I seen all these brothers like swerving through the traffic, handing out flyers. And um, I remember being a child asking my mom, I said, uh, who are those Who are those men? And she said, oh, those are Malcolm X people. And I'm mm. like, well, who's Malcolm X? But that image never left my mind because mm. I've never seen anything like that. So I, that's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. But yeah, that's how I got introduced to the teachings when I was like in the 10th grade. Okay, praise to a lot. Shout out to uh, the brother who came in and was, uh, you know, helping with the uh, explain the teachings to you all. Yes, sir. Sister Miriam says, "Awesome Lakin family, Lakin Salam," and wow. Sister Tina says, "Awesome Lakin family, Lakin Salam." And thank you, everyone who's watching all around the world. Okay, so you're saying I learned about the West Coast through music and through movies. So you're saying you're from the Bay Area and back down. You know, from that right. you said that. <laughs> right. Okay, yes, right. sir. I, I want to be clear. Okay, yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Okay. So once you come into San Francisco, once you get registered, uh, what is the climate like? Who who trains you? What put us into the mindset? Brother, when I came into the nation, now mind you, this is 1993, 94. It was going down on the West Coast because you know, you have movies like Colors, uh, Boys in the Hood. It was going down, brother. Like, so I remember being in the nation, getting trained at the time, uh, the uh the minister, Minister Christopher Muhammad, his name now is Minister Abdul Rashid Allah Muhammad. Mm. He's been on his post doing the A1 job. And the captain of the time was who helped train us was Brother Mark, Brother Mark Muhammad. Um <clears throat> coming in, bro, in 93, being a young man, we didn't have a mosque. We used to uh meet at the community center in the Fillmore district called the Ella Hill Hutch. And I remember just soldiering, brother. Like back then, I remember you walk out with a uh 200 final calls, like bundled up on each side and you used to try to not come back with anything. Mm. But it, it the climate was pretty rough because I just remember going through a lot, brother, uh, trying to be a part of the, uh, the group of Muslims that helped establish the nation in San Francisco. Um, I mean, I remember being young. I remember one time, to show you how real it got, um, one of the brothers one time, uh, never forget, he was out later, later than he should have been and he got jumped on by some brothers in the neighborhood. He wasn't in uniform or anything. And I remember being a young brother, uh, back then we had pagers. And our routine every Saturday night, we would get in the field and go, and then by Saturday night, we would all go to one of the brothers' houses and get a haircut to get fresh for the Sunday meeting. And I remember we all have pagers. Our pagers start going off at the same time. I'm like, man, what's going on? We had to move out. <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail, but I thank Allah because Allah shielded me for a lot of things. Because I was a youngster at the time, I was under 18, the brother who was a captain, Brother Mark, was like, brother, you can't roll on this mission because if something happened to you, we couldn't explain nothing to your mother. But mm. whatever it was with the brothers in the community, we ended up working it out and uh, everything ended in peace. And some of them brothers is in the ranks to this day um, because of that. So praise be to Allah. So, yeah, but it was, it was a rough climate, brother. We went through a lot uh, back in the 90s. Yes, sir. OK, well, what 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 about the Million Man March? How, how did how, what was the climate like leading up to that? And how did it personally impact you? Man, you know what's crazy, brother Josh? This is something I really, 
to this day, I really, I'm, I'm conflicted about. So I was in the mob, I got registered April 15th, 1993. I was in the 10th grade and um, I soldiered, but right around 94, I was maybe 16, 17, I left the mosque. I went to go play football mm. and I wasn't around and um, I wasn't soldiering and, and during those times. I was away uh, playing ball and uh, I regret that because I remember when I did come back, um, I went to go into the meeting um, one time. It was like right towards the end of like maybe 90, beginning of 96 and um, brother was like, welcome back. And then everybody's last name was Muhammad. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> what's going on, right? So I come in, my brother say, well, yeah, you know, um, you didn't attend the Million Man March and you didn't, you weren't active in the ranks, so you still got to wear the last name X. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to go to the Million Man March, brother. Um, the one thing I would say about getting Islam so young, brother Josh, is that when um, I did go away to play ball, I had never seen the world, really. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Never partook in anything uh other than the nation, because I joined, I, I started processing at 15. So mm. I feel victim to the world for some year, years when I got into that college lifestyle. And yeah, so I was out there for a minute, brother. But um, Allah had blessed me to come back. uh, And I was able to go to, uh, I think I came with the Savings Day in 97. And that was a beautiful experience. But yeah, I, I missed the Million Man March, brother. And that, that's something that's, to this day, I just... Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, praise be to a lot. Uh, okay. Well, let us know what advice um, we all, many people, especially people who accept the Islam at a young age, mm. we all have to decide. Right. You know, like, you know we have, you know we go figure right. out, out. Some people stay longer. Some people, go, but it's right. like God to bring us back. What right. advice do you give to the younger generation about um, the value of what we have been given? Brother, I tell you for sure, for sure. Um. I'm thankful to Allah because if I didn't get the teachings when I when I when I got them, I wonder if I'd even be here right now. Cause I look at some of my friends uh that are my same age group that are either in jail, they're dead. And just I don't even know what type of person I would have been if I hadn't have got the teachings at uh at the age I, I got the teachings. Mm. Even if I wasn't in the mosque for a couple of years, because I had the wisdom of the teachings, I was still able to navigate through life. And I was saved just on the even, you know, just on the mere principle alone. Maybe I wasn't active for a few years, but just having the knowledge of self and the wisdom, brother, I was able to go left when a lot of people went right. And um, mm -hmm. so my advice would be, brother, stick to your teachings. Um, you know, that's all you have. <laughs> that's all you have. So if you fall short, just pick yourself up like we do. Dust yourself off and fall back in, brother. Get back in the huddle. Yes, sir. OK. Yeah, Praise be to a lot. Well, speaking of sports, mm. do, you do you coach or do you help like mentor the, the, the younger people? I tried to coach off and on, brother. Um, I have a couple of uh best friends that are, are head coaches. Um, I just go support, brother. I don't uh try to help coach. Um I tried a couple years ago. Um, it's time consuming. Uh I work full time. I have two daughters. Um, you know, I take care of my mom who's disabled as well. She had a couple of strokes mm -hmm. and I take care of her. So I don't have the time, brother Josh, to really uh to get out there like that. If I did, I definitely would, brother. Yes, sir. Well, may Allah continue to bless you. And people are bearing witness in the comments and all praises due to Allah. Um, since Miriam answers his name, and thank you all. I wanted to ask you, um, taking care of your mother, taking care of your um, wife and children, what advice would you give to future fathers? No, oh, I, I would give uh, give you some advice. It, I'm still being challenged to this day, raising daughters, brother. That's that's a that's a test because um they force you to deal with the sensitive side of yourself. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And I have, I wasn't perfect. I, I used to treat my daughter, I used to jam them like they was FOI. <laughs> <laughs> brother, we just now, they understand me now. I'm, I'm 46 years old, brother. But um, I, I, I uh, they're forcing me to, uh, to, to, to embrace the sensitive side. And um, I take care of my mom because, um, you know, that's the, uh, I was talking to our minister the other day and he was telling me, brother, that's a blessing and Allah is blessing you for doing that. And mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing we could do, brother, is is be able to give back to your parents what they gave to you. And sometimes, brother Josh, I got to check myself because, you know, you, you work all day. I work like a 13 hour day, you know, and sometimes you may come home and just want to be. And then you get asked the question. I found myself snapping a few times like, well, what do you need? 
I had to check myself. Like, I can't talk to moms like that. So it, it's, it's a challenge, brother. But, you know, I, I'm thankful to Allah because he wouldn't have put me on a post if he didn't think I had what it took to uh to, to do it. So, you know, I just try to take one day at a time, brother Josh. And, um, yeah, so my advice is you just got to really be in, if you got daughters, man, you just really got to be patient with them. You can't uh, because you don't want to lose them. You know what I mean? Because they'll get to a point when especially when they get start getting influenced by the world, brother, like with my children between third, but between maybe 13 and 17 with both of them, I noticed, you know, the change in, in, um, in, uh, in things, but by Allah's grace, I was able to navigate through that. So that's, uh, I don't know if they answered the question, but that's well, absolutely better. Yeah. Thank and, you, and, yes, sir. And, and salute to you for taking care of your moms, man, may Allah bless you with that. Brother, praise be to Allah. Well, you know, if brother, if I didn't have the teachings, because I told you I'm the youngest, I got two older brothers. Like, I, how did I get the the post? Like, I to, <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, but I'm thankful to uh, uh the teachings um from um our, the way that the minister in San Francisco, Minister Rashid Allah, through the Honorable Mrs. Louis Farrakhan, they instilled things in me, brother. And I said, it's like I said in the beginning, if I didn't have that early, brother, I don't know if I would have been able to, to to either raise my two daughters. Or uh, take care of my mom. So it all goes back to the teachings. Oh, praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, brother Leon. We have a quick sixty-second commercial break for all yes, of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. Thank you for everyone for each like, share, and subscription, as well as every cash app. We truly appreciate it. Dollar sign the People's Podcast. One moment. Thank you to everyone showing love on YouTube as well. One second. Any of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me children's book and coloring book and now Spanish book all three available on amazon.com Sister Naima's Stay on Point Dance Academy LLC she teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country right here in the studios of Atlanta dress in the best of fashion Brother Kenneth's <laughs> bow tie maker extraordinaire he'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 Disinfected Cleaning Services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. Excellent. As well as Sister Sherry Muhammad, one second, Asiatic Minds. We want to thank Sister Sherry Muhammad with Asiatic Minds. She teaches STEM virtually to young kings and queens all around the world. Please enroll your children in AsiaticMinds.com. Thank you very much. Okay, right back to our brother, brother Leon. So, what has been the greatest trial in your life and how have you been able to overcome that trial? Oh, that's a good question, man. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I, I'm going to share something with you, uh, Brother Josh. Um, It's really uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to talk about it much, but I, uh, so last year, um, uh, one morning I woke up, brother, and I was just dizzy, right? Like the room was spinning. And I was like, man, what's going on? So I, I thought it would go away. So I, I worked through it. Um, a couple of days went by and it never went away, right? So I um I talked to the to the doctor and I was like, you know, I've been uh been really dizzy and um I don't know what's going on. Like it's not going away. So they did some labs, or whatever, they didn't find anything, right? So as um what I learned is when you have when you panic, whatever type of Things you got to go, it intensifies. So I noticed like over the next week to months, I start getting all these crazy symptoms, brother. I was, I was a uh, short of breath. I was uh having shooting pains in my, up my chest and my arms. And I literally, brother, I went to the emergency room about 10 times in one year. Hmm. And, um, I took every test known to man, brother. I took, they had me take a CT scan. They had me wear a heart monitor, uh, wear, wear uh, one for, uh, seven days. Then they had me wear a 14 day heart monitor. CT scan. They did a, a um something called an angiogram, and um, they made me take some type of test, a vestibular test, where I had to wear some goggles. They thought it was something wrong with my balance. Um, I was off work for a whole year, brother, and literally I was at a low point. 
I was at a low point because when you having some type of symptoms and they can't find an answer for you, you know, you will really it will it will do something to you, brother, because you start your mind will go start thinking the worst. Like, what if it's this? What if it's that? Um, I'm thankful to a lot, brother, that, um, you know, with all that was going on, we had the, the pandemic Then I'm taking care of a, of a parent that I, I and I work in the public. I'm a bus operator. So, and you know, we're not getting none of that poison. So. I'm trying to take care of my mom and I just had so much on my plate, but to make a long story short, it was something simple called anxiety that mm. was caused a myriad of symptoms. And so a lot blessed me brother with a doctor who took the time and actually we became great friends to where we even talk, uh, you know, off, off of the, 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 the network. Um, and I've been on the road to recovery slowly with being 46. I'm, I've been a big guy my whole life. I, not a diabetic. I got a tad bit of high blood pressure that I that I'm working. Sometimes it's a little high, sometimes it's not. So, but I say what I have to say. Um, that was my biggest trial, brother, to um still have to take care of your children, um, still have to take care of your mom. And because of the symptom I was having, I start even wondering if I could even drive a bus anymore because you don't want to be driving a bus full of people around and you dizzy, you know what I mean? Yes, so uh, a lot blessed me to uh to, to to battle that, brother. So that was the biggest trial I had in my life to date because. I literally start thinking about, dang, you know, I have a house, I have a mortgage to pay. I have this, that I don't have thousands of dollars in the bank. We just two paychecks short of things not being right. You know what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. that that was my biggest trial that I just faced in 2000, from 2022 to 2023. Um, That was a, a trial for me, brother. But um, I was able to battle back, been back to work since April 23. Um, I, I changed my, my lifestyle around, uh, I work out more, um, try to think positive, try not to stress as much because stress is, is, is the worst thing, brother Josh. Um, yes, sir. That was a trial for me, brother. And, and it all was just something simple as stress and anxiety. Mm. And that got a prayer for that too. So that's right. just, you know what I'm saying? So shame on me for not just taking a year to figure that out. You know what I mean? But yeah. Okay, no. great. Yes, sir. And what what are some of the advice? First of all, may Allah continue to bless you and strengthen you. What is what advice would you give to many of us who, you know, stress and exhaustion? That's, that's real in everybody's life, but it's real in mine for sure. What yeah. advice would you give to people? You know, how how can we manage that better? You know, you know what's something something that's good. Two things I tell you. I did a lot of walking, a lot of walking, a lot of swimming. But you know, another good thing is charity. Mm. Whether it's financial or whatever you do, just get, give back, brother. Get some of that. Uh, the minister used to say, "We got to stack our acts of kindness." Mm. And um, that's something that I did, even though I wasn't feeling one hundred. I just made it a point to be charitable with a lot of my friends and in the public. Like it'd be times, brother, where I'd be in the grocery store, I see a brother, because at one point I was a single father. I see a brother in the grocery store with his child. I won't even say nothing. I just get a cashier, hundred dollars. He'll take care of that man groceries, and I walk out. So charity, brother, is something, you know, I've given people toes off my back because that is something that, you know, charity is, brother, we got to stack our acts of kindness. So that's some advice I would give to anybody in that that's striving to be righteous, man. And you want God to be a uh, have favor on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but don't do it for that intention. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. I, I, man, sir. pay it forward. I definitely believe in that. Right. Pay it forward. Yes, sir. OK. Praise be to Allah. What has been the greatest joy in your life? Brother, you know, the greatest joy in my life, quite naturally having my, my two two daughters, but I'm going to tell you one of the greatest moments in my life uh, that nothing could trump this moment. Um, i never forget, brother, in 1997, uh, Donald Minister Louis Farrakhan went on a world friendship tour. Mm. I believe it was 97. Could have been 98. It was 97. But we had Savers Day that year. It was in Chicago. And I never forget the the talk was that because the minister was all around the world that they was gonna arrest him when he came back into the country. That was the talk, you know what I mean? So I remember we flew in for Savage Day. I'm coming. I had twenty dollars in my pocket, um, for that whole weekend. And um, but I never forget we all met at the school and we was going to pick the minister up from the airport, from O'Hare Airport in Chicago. And I never forget, brother. We pulled up to the airport. I must have seen about two hundred cars with FOI just slamming doors, falling in ranks. And so I'm standing in ranks. I'm a young man. I probably was about maybe 22, maybe. Mm, mm. And a uh, brother come tap me on the shoulder. Brother, come with me. So he, he's coming down the, the rank of FOI that's on the on the uh 
not the runway, but you know, at the airport, at the terminal. You see? Falling into the uh, airport, right? So I don't know, you don't act, we don't ask questions, we FOI, right? So I'm, we in ranks and I'm stepping, brother. And then as we're walking through the airport, he's tapping brothers to fall out and he's putting them in position to hold post. So I'm still walking. Now it's like three of us and I'm walking. I forget who the brother was, but we get to the terminal where the minister was um about to come off the airport, airplane. Yes, yes, and so now it's me and one other brother. He's like, brother, I need you to you know stand, stand in front of that bathroom right there. And he says, now when the minister comes off the plane, I want you to fall in and join the rank and we're going to roll up out of the airport. So brother, I'll never forget. The minister, he came off the airplane. He had a black mink on one of those black, uh, like one of them Russian hats that go way up high like that, right? Yes, sir. And so I'm walking. And then so as he comes, like literally he may have walked 10 feet and the restroom was right there. And I fell in like, like not on his side, but a little bit behind it, but on his side where I could kind of look and see the side shot, brother. And I got a chance to walk through that whole airport, maybe about five feet away from the minister and brother the way. But I, that feeling, and when I talk about it to this day, I get goosebumps and chills because I never, my chest probably would have been, was out to here when I was walking, brother, because I, it was just, a, this is a, it was a surreal, I can't describe it, but I got a chance to walk through that whole airport, brother, about five feet away from the minister. And as we walking, you know, the, um, our ranks is, is just swelling because those brothers posted all along the airport. And yes, we sir. got outside, brother. I seen all them FOI and I seen the minister. It was just one of them feelings like you just. That's probably one of the joyfulest moments in my life, brother, to be walking that close next to the minister, brother, in a time like that. Oh, praise to like Go ahead. Yes, sir. All right, walk, bro. Good, brother Leon. Okay, now, brother Leon, I have a question. First yes, of all, sir. on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank you for your sacrifices. We thank a lot for your sacrifices and the many sacrifices of your family. Um, Man, let them know we have nothing but love for them. Can you let us know your parents? Like you, you didn't say your parents' name. You were saying you. Oh care. well, my dad passed away in um 2008. His name was uh they weren't they weren't um they they weren't Muslim, but my dad uh passed away uh to lung cancer in 2008. And my mom, her name is Alice. She's 80 years old. She um had a couple of strokes, but she and she and she she's she's not registered, but she accepted Islam. You know, so Beautiful. um. She's still here, um, taking care of her. And she's a soldier. So my dad's name was Charles. My mom's name was Alice. And uh, my mm. mom's Thank you, Brother Josh, for uh, even asking that, brother. Oh, yes, sir. Man, love that man. we thank you for coming together to create you. And, you know, so praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. All right. I wanted to ask you about this music. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. We, we, I want to just let people know, I, I get sent a lot of music, a lot of artists, you know, my, you know, constantly. Oh, people love I can people. imagine. Yes, sir. But when I got this song, I said, hold up now. <laughs> hold Damn. up. Now. Hold up now. Hold up. What's going wow. on? I guess it's this song. I just, I just, I was like, man, whatever. Let me, I didn't know who you were. I was like, oh, random brother. I was like, well, I'm sir. Just press play. I'm about to play Call of Duty or something, you know, get into the war mode. And I heard this beat. I said, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Josh. Hold up now, okay. I said I hear the singing, I hear you come in. I'm like, okay, yes, sir. Wow. Um, so the song was phenomenal. Then later, of course, you said uh, more music. But where can we uh, hear your music? Okay, L let me say something to you before I say something, brother Josh. Um, I sent that to you because I've been following your platform. I know you're a little bit younger than me, and I was like, I just want to send this to brother Josh. I know I want to know if it's anything worth me putting out. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. But a little backstory to that. Let me tell you what, what I did, Brother Josh. I sent that to you, right? Mm -hmm. Then I second-guessed myself about five minutes later. So I went on the app and I unsent it. Oh, no, okay. So I didn't think you got it, brother. I literally mm -hmm. unsent it. And I don't know how that works. I unsent it. So I was like, I'm not ready to share it. I don't, I don't know if I'm overstepping my boundaries. He don't know me. So I unsent it, brother. And all praise be to Allah, I didn't think you never got the song. Mm -hmm. And then three days later, brother, you hit me. And was like, hey, brother, that's fire. You know? So so thank you, brother. I literally tried to not send it to you after I did it. <laughs> but to answer your question, brother, the song is on all platforms. Uh, it's called Perfect Match. And I got a song called Questions. And I got a song called Product of the 90s. You can get those songs on all the platforms, Spotify, Amazon, Tidal, whatever. But like I told you in the beginning of the interview, brother Josh, um, I'm going to leave those songs out 
but I'm in the process of getting them remastered and I'm going to re-release them probably before Savage Day. But those three songs are up. And I say that to say, um, got one blank right there, but um, those songs are out, but I'm in the process of, of remixing them to get a better mix because I'm st still learning how to mix the music. It's easy to make a beat and write some music while you got the beat playing, but it's you got to have a trained ear to be able to get those those mixes sound right. And I just, it was good enough to put out, but I think it could be better. But they're on all streaming platforms, Brother Josh. Yes, sir. I want to make sure we all support it. And everybody, you know, people going to be all spooky and like they're not Valentine's Day, not coming up and stuff. But I'm just saying, y'all want to be romantic, you know what I'm saying? Put a little music on, you know, sit on that, let's start with the perfect match. And then, <laughs> then, you know what I'm saying? Then if you want to, you know, ride, bending corners, you know, as you were saying. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, you know, brother. Yeah, but yeah, no, for sure. Uh, um, uh, I was I was thoroughly impressed. I just wasn't I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't just going to say I was not expecting that at all. I was like, oh, he really make music music. Because I'm going to send me stuff and it just, he's like, all right, okay, brother, right on. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, yeah. okay, this is a real song. I'm like, all right. Thank you, brother Josh. Wait till I send you the uh, the, the, the remix. I'm going to send it to you, when, uh, the one I finished mixing it over, and um, I'm going to send you a couple other. And um, I just appreciate you for even taking the time. Like I said, I've been watching your plat. I don't know if you know, but I be messaging you a lot. Sometimes on YouTube, sometimes on on Instagram, sometimes on Facebook. I be I was the one actually like, brother, you got to get some people from the West Coast on. And oh then man, you, I, I remember that. You reposted, yes, sir, yes, sir. Then you reposted uh the Cam one, and I saw that. Yes, and I'm, yes, sir, yes, sir. Cam is another one, brother, that influenced me growing up. I was already in the ranks when he came out, but we used to bump that Cam never again religiously, brother. While out in the field, brother, that in that in that Ice Cube, he say um. He say, I met Farrah kind of had dinner. Now you're asking my five percenter. Well, yes, yes. no, but I go where the brothers go. Yeah. Devil Comic Boss number 54. Man, I used to be, man, I used I miss those days, brother. The early 90s. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother Josh. No, no, that's powerful, brother. I um yeah. man, I, I'm um okay, so I didn't even know that was you who, who asked me about the West Coast brothers. See, I didn't know that. Yes, sir. I'll be on all your platforms coming, but I, I figured um I just I've been I'm a fan of your platform, brother. Praise be to a lot. Now, I ask you, are you going to shoot a video for any of these songs? Yeah, I'm talking to a brother, um, a brother of mine that I that I work with. I probably won't be in the video. It'll probably be some type of animation. Uh, okay. I'm not a, I'm not a, a Casanova. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying <laughs> any, any any video anywhere I could be a part of and support. Do it like you know what I'm saying. Do do a little side by you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> bro. I tell you what, brother. Josh, um, I'm I'm gonna do this stuff and then I, inshallah I'll get a chance to meet you in person if you go to Savage Day. Yes, sir. And, uh, I'm gonna shoot a video. I got some people I'm talking to right now, brother. Um, so that's definitely gonna happen. I definitely would love to have you in there, you know what I'm saying? Making me look cool, like I got some swag. Cause I be seeing you with them hats on, bro. You be you be <laughs> I be watching them hats, brother. You you got a hat collection. <laughs> yes, sir. I wanna um uh, it'll be my honor to be in your video, man. Cause that's what I'm saying. I, I like your music, so it's like, oh yeah, I I I mess with this. Well, speaking of albums, what uh, is your favorite album of all time, sir? Oh, I'm from the West Coast. Okay. My favorite album of all time, brother, is a uh, uh, Ice Cube death certificate. It's up there. Uh, yes, sir. I got yeah. Yes, I was sir. watching the wall. Okay, yeah. Well, you know it. And then my second one is Cam, Never Again. Okay, then, okay. I'm from the Bay, so I'm an E-40 fan. So I, I can't... I was raised on E-40. JT. Uh, okay. Uh, Tupac. I don't know if you ever heard of Sebo. Uh, that's more that gangster uh, rap, but Sebo. Okay. But uh, yeah, Ice Cube, E-40. Anything, you know... So you saying E forty? You saying like sprinkle me that type of E forty? You know what I'm saying? That type yeah, of that early E forty, man. Even okay. the stuff now, like man, when I, it was hard to be righteous, man, back in the nineties because that rap music, bro, was, it was hard, brother, because you know you can get to throw on some pocket and then you, what you gonna do? You you just had a suit and bow tie, now you <laughs> bobbing like this, bro. So it was hard, brother, to, to find some righteous hip hop until Cam came out. You know what I mean? Okay, hey, sir, shout out to Cam for his interview yeah. and. um Man, his, and his imprint on music as well is perfect, right. with the nation. Yeah, how, you, sure. how, you, how you represent it, praise be to Allah. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the West Coast. Right. Uh, E40. So you up on Ann Banks and all of them. Yeah, that's my era. I grew up in okay. like, that's okay. like 94, 95 right there. That's when I was like in my 18, 19s. I was in the in the thick of it. Uh, you know, so yeah, it was it was it was rough, brother. But I all that stuff, you know, Dr. Dre, all that, man. Mm -hmm. It's just you from it? You you now? I don't, you are you from Chicago? You know what I'm asking? Are you from it in Atlanta? Where are you from? I, I live in Atlanta, but I'm from right. Naperville, which is outside of Chicago. Okay, so Chicago man. Oh, y'all got one of my favorite rappers. I, I don't even know why I didn't say Kanye West. That's probably <laughs> one of my, I skipped that whole uh 
whole uh, situation, man. That's my favorite rapper right there. Got two of his albums behind me. You already know I'm a gay fan. He for sure. Man, he brought the swag to the rap game that it was missing. He was able to make it cool to not be gangster anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he, he definitely, um, I was telling my sister the other day about um, about my father. You know, he's very military and all of that. And I yeah. said, when, I, when I'm high school, I'm popping. Everybody was wearing like Jabot, like big clothes. Right, right. But, Ye said, we put, we put, he put this pink polo on. I come down, said, I'm like, man, I'm about to go out. You know what I'm saying? Man. My dad was like, <laughs> bro, I was like, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to explain to you this Kanye West. Like, you need to get up on that. He was like, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a trip because that's your pops. But I, man, I fear that man because I remember when I was a youngster, I don't know if you're familiar. I, it was a, it was a, a, a lecture for the men that, um, uh, Supreme Captain Musa was speaking on, but your your dad got one of them voices, brother. <laughs> Gotta put fear in you, brother. <laughs> hey, yeah. So, man, big respect to your dad, brother. I never got a chance to meet him, but you know, he 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 pumped fear <laughs> just for this look and his, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it's a lot. I'll make sure that we connect that Savings Day. Um, and I, um, it's an honor to meet you, my brother, uh, virtually. Mm -hmm. But it shall uh, in person will do the same. What would you like your legacy to be, uh, brother Leon? Oh man, that I was just down for my people, brother, and down for uh support our minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and that uh that is just what it is. We don't have nothing else. Um, nothing else to get behind, nothing else to push. Music is cool, but at the end of the day, that's where it's at. This is just something to do to, you know, maybe make a few dollars and just to, you know, satisfy, you know, my soul. But uh Everything Farrakhan, everything NOI, everything Messenger, everything for Rod, brother. That's what we pushing, bro. Praise be to a lot. Once again, I'm telling y'all, I'm endorsing this brother Leon's music. Y'all got it's gonna blow yeah. you. I'm looking at you and I'm listening to the sound. I'm like, I can't believe this is you, been <laughs> hey, hey, brother, I, I played it for somebody. Um, and they um, because again, brother Josh, I'm not gonna hold you up too much longer. This is a side of me that I just started sharing, maybe about. A year or two ago i even feel awkward sometimes playing like when we when i was waiting for you you was playing my music i was cringing because i'm not used to that you know what i mean but it's me it's me brother um and um it made me feel i sent it to one other person that was like i never knew that brother could could make that type of music i had to send it to um our local minister because i didn't want to come on you know on your platform without letting them know and then letting them know what i showed you so he, even he was like you know great job brother so yeah Thank you. That's a blessing, brother. John, I really appreciate you, bro. For real, for real. Yes, sir. The honor is mine, my brother. And we want to make sure everybody support it. What 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 do they search like on YouTube? Oh, just, Spotify, just brother. If you type in uh brother Lee, um, I got like a couple songs. I got one called The Perfect Match, the one you like. I got a song called Questions too. It's another like kind of love song. And I got a song called uh product of the nineties and a song called water boy. I'm kind of like, I, I cringe when people play it. <laughs> I, like, I like water boy too. I like water boy too. I like, water oh, you boy. like cause I, I, I played that for my daughter. Cause I didn't know if I, I could really relate because I'm from the nineties. Like, I don't know, but I'm glad you liked it brother. But I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of working on an um, album right now, brother. It'll be out March 1st, brother. It's called the bucket list project. But those songs that you like are on all the platforms, brother Josh. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, listen, if I could just, the perfect match. I, you know, I'm married to Beyonce. I don't know if you knew that or not, but you know, what I'm saying, maybe me and her could be in a video. And then for the product yeah. of the '90s, you know, I'll, any throwback, uh, whatever we got to do to get, you know, whatever your concept of the video is, I want to be a part of it. We running with that. You already said it, so brother, I'm coming when I come to you, brother. I'm on your time frame. Praise be to Allah. It'd be my honor to work with you. It's my honor to meet you. Thank you all for watching. And just like uh, brother Leon reached out social media if anybody would like to be a guest or have guest suggestions by all means that's how i get people's podcast comes from word of mouth and connecting like this so it's my honor to meet you my brother this is joshua Leonard muhammad signing off for the people's podcast i had a, i was i was ready to play the music but uh, <laughs> leon said he want to wait till you get the master the thing because i'm telling you it's going it's going to trip y'all out when y'all hear it so thank you sir this is joshua you, brother, muhammad oh, again. You could have played it. No, I'm just playing it. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you, good brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate you as well. Thank you all for watching. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Walaikum salam.